particles here because that's the color that we defined over here in our file. And just like that, you can also define an opacity. So for example, we can say opacity and give it an opacity of 0 0.5. Save it again. Try to run this file. And you should see that this one's a little bit darker and we can see the background of it, you know, starts uh, acting a little bit different because of the opacity. So these two parameters that we typed here, color and opacity, inside our shader, in our uh, Hello World shader, usually are represented by these two variables, OS and CS, which means opacity input and color input. We will now move over to try to expand the shader to make it a little more usable. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do is add some parameters here to our shader. So what we're going to do is just expand this line right here and uh, we're going to start typing some attributes. So the first thing, first attribute I'm going to create is a control for the ambient uh, contribution. So let's just type float ka and then give it a default value that is the value that if no one touches that, that uh, input parameter this is the value that it's going to have. So um, we're going to give it 0 0.5 then we're going to create one for the diffuse, KD, and then give it a value of, uh, let's say, 85. Now we're going to create a couple of colors. We're going to create one for surface, surface color, and give it a default value. Let's give it a default value of uh, red. And then we're going to create a surface opacity. And then we're going to give it a default value of 1 so that the object is always opaque. So these four parameters will now be accessible to the user of our shaders to be able to control this material. And uh, now we're going to go into the body of our shader, which is between the curly brackets, and we're going to create a couple of variables that we're going to need uh, further down the line. Um, and actually, we're going to create one right now. And I usually just type here variables. And the variable we're going to create, its name is going to be, it's going to be a normal. It's going to be a normal. And its name will be NF. Or actually, let's call it NN. And then here we're going to type the command, and the command is called normalize. And then you tell it that you want to normalize the default normal on every object. Every object has a normal embedded into it, calculated by renderman or provided by the user. And here, what you're doing is making sure that the normal is a unique length, which, it, you know, the, the name for that operation is normalize. Uh, it's a very important operation in shading uh, because a lot of operators don't work properly if the normal that you pass to it is not normalized. So uh, we're going to move down here. And one of the changes we're going to do is um, we're going to override the OS that has been uh, passed by the, by the renderer in uh, this line over here. Remember how we used opacity and color? We're going to be overriding these two values because sometimes uh, these values are more used for display purposes. Uh, uh, it's always usually good to have an actual formal parameter used to control the color and the opacity. So here we're going to use this surface opacity right here. So we're just going to tell it surface opaque. And then under the, uh, the final color output, we're going to do OI, and then we're going to multiply it by surface color. And then this we're going to multiply by the input of KA, which is our input multiplier for ambient, multiply by a default render man operation called ambient, which just does ambient lookup for all the lights on the scene. And uh, then we're going to add to that the KD multiplier, and then multiply this by diffuse, which is another built-in uh, render man command. So we close our brackets, and this right here is basically a Lambert shader. Let's clean this up a little bit by getting rid of that. And we're going to go ahead and give it a save. And now we're going to go to our compile window and try to compile this shader. And whoop, we got some error. So it tells us right here that on line 19, there's an undef undefined uh, variable. So let's see. Here we have, ah, we missed an R. Surface opaque. We give this a save again. 
we try to compile and it doesn't give us any any errors which means it was good so now if I go over here and I render the last hello world rip file which is this one if you remember it had an opacity of 0, 05 and a color of yellow and I render it our output should be a red sphere and there you have it now difference between the previous image the previous image was solid white and this one as you can see we're starting to see some shading we have a light source coming from this upper hand side and over here it just falls off to dark so right now we have a Lambert shader for a sphere and uh, as you could see it only took very little uh, very little lines to achieve this let me um, bring in that window again so you, we can have it here for future reference because what we're going to do now is we're going to add a, uh, a specular component to this to turn it into a plastic and with that we're going to end up this little tech byte so we do that by modifying our shader a little bit and we need to add a couple of more parameters one of them is going to be a KS which is going to be the multiplier for a specular and let's give it a value of one and another float that we're going to call uh, roughness and we are going to give it a value of uh, let's say uh, 0 0.2 now we are going to need another predefined variable here and this is going to be a vector and we're going to call it v and then in here we're going to invert the i vector and an i vector is usually a vector that goes from the center of the camera into the shading point so it travels in that direction so we're gonna reverse it because that's what uh, we need to use in our next uh, operation so down here what we're gonna do is as you could see here we have uh, an opacity multiplied by surface color which was red multiplied by the addition of the ambient contribution and the diffuse contribution well a specular is usually an additive effect so we're just gonna do plus and in here we're gonna type spec specular color which actually we forgot to add up here so we're just gonna go over here and type color specular color and then once again give it a value of one white specular so now we go over here we tell it we're gonna add to it the value of specular color times the KS which is our specular multiplier time and here we're going to use another built-in function which is called specular and here we give it the normal then the incoming vector and then a roughness value so with that done we can save this try to compile again cross our fingers for no errors no errors great and then we go finally here we render and we should get an image now which looks like plastic so there you have it Lambert and plastic so what can you do with this shader well if we go back to the hello world rib file you can uh, do several things modify uh, certain attributes here so for example let's say you want to change color specular color and then you get well, you want the specular to be red also uh, you don't need comas on the red files you can do that go over to your renderer again fire it off and we should get now an image with a red highlight there it is